Uh, so, so your school, how, how is it called? Um, it's called Phoenix Online School. Oh, Phoenix Online. And you work there as a teacher or? Uh, it's mainly a platform where uh, parent or which parents can use to educate their children at home. So oh, we don't. It's, we don't it's, yeah. it's it's not like a traditional school. No, no, I don't, not at all. No. Yeah. So you work with parents and children who are home educated, or yeah. And so what do you do in <laughs> in the Phoenix online school? Well, mainly I just introduce the system to the parents and the students, uh, and then they are off uh, on their own. Uh, we don't organize any lessons or. Um, we don't track the progress of the students mm. uh, and we don't even give any feedback to the students unless requested for. Oh. So it, it's uh, all the responsibility of the parents to teach their children, but it's just kind of a framework. So my original idea yep. was to give the students as much freedom as possible yes. while still fulfilling the national curriculum. Okay, okay. Because also in Finland, the homeschoolers have to follow the national curriculum. Yes. Um, but the good side about the curriculum is that it's very flexible. Mm. Uh, it doesn't say when you have to study what content, and also the content is, isn't defined uh, very detailed. Mm. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility in that. Uh, so basically what I did was to transform the national curriculum into questions and tasks. Uh, I still wanted to follow the idea of uh, subjects uh, because I didn't want to make it too different from the uh, traditional school mm. uh, mm. to scare parents away, <laughs> yeah. basically. Uh, <laughs> because I also wanted to be a kind of uh, easy access system um, for because there are so many students suffering in the school system, mm. uh, and I wanted to give them an uh, easy option to get out of the system. I would say uh, how many. Like how many parents and children are involved in in the Phoenix school? Uh, during eight years, we've had a total uh, a little bit over 300 students. 300. Uh, and currently okay. we have about uh, 50 or 60 students. 50 or 60. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I heard that homeschooling is legal. It's no problem. No problem. Or yeah, are it... there some conditions that you have to met to, to become a homeschooler? Like... Uh, no, there are no conditions. It's a parents' rights. It's parents' rights. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. It's not like in Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not our right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if parents decide to home, they want to homeschool their children with their children, they just oh, they have to be under some school or not? Uh, no, they don't no? have to be. Okay, okay. Uh, but the local local municipality has to follow the progress of the student. And how, uh, how do they do? How do they do that? Uh, the law doesn't define it, so there's there's no regulation. Uh, but the common practice and the guidance from the uh, government is that uh, you have once or twice a meeting with the uh, children or the child. Uh, once or twice for a year. For which period? A year. Once or twice a year. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, one important point is that it doesn't include evaluation. It's only following the progress. Oh, uh, and w what if it? Uh, <clears throat> what if they don't do the progress they like? Would like to see the government? Uh, well, then the, there's the option of uh, complaining to the kind of uh, um, making an official complaint, like a, a sue the parents, basically. Oh, and does uh, it ha does it happen or? Okay. No, usually it doesn't happen. No, doesn't it's happen. very, very rare. And it, it, there's uh, one case when the parents were sued and uh, it was clear that the parents uh, uh, or, or that they were, there wasn't enough progress uh, based on the curriculum, mm -hmm. but the parent, parents could uh, show that they were trying and that was enough. And is there some like final exam in the in the in the end of the primary education or or not? No, no, there oh, is no. not. But there is a system. If if the if the parents want to have a kind of a number certificate for their child, uh, they can apply for a special exam, and that's for each subject. Oh. Okay. Uh, and and it doesn't actually mean that it's an exam examination, but mm. uh, just an evaluation. 
uh, and uh, again, the the uh, the law doesn't say any anything about how it's supposed to be done. Mm. So it's up to the local officials and schools how they want to organize it and kind of in in cooperation with the parents. And what about the homeschoolers when they finish the primary education? They uh, how how do they continue to the secondary uh, or high high school or whatever? Yeah. That's also a very flexible system. So uh, even if the uh, student doesn't have any number uh, certificate, uh, they can apply for secondary education. And the uh, principals have uh, full right to um, accept students without any certificates. Mm. Uh, so it's just up to the principal if uh, he or she considers that the student is capable of studying in their education system. So that's enough so you are like the only online platform you are not like the official schools under the gov official school under government no yeah so you don't have to follow like the rules of the government for the schools and uh what about like do the parents pay something for for this kind of service or yeah we have a nominal fee we are organized as an association oh. so we are not a business uh so every every parent or every family pays 50 euros per month uh regardless of how many students or how many children they have in in our school oh. all right and how many employees do you have or uh well my, me and uh, there's another person who who we are kind of uh, cooperating with um and uh we don't have any any hired staff uh, so we both work as like with our own uh, private companies. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. So we're kind of uh, doing hourly, hourly work for the association. Okay. And you you found it the this online platform? Yes. Uh, you said eight years ago. Uh, yeah, kind of. It started. I got um, the idea about ten years ago, and uh, it started evolving, and I started building the system then. Yeah. Yeah. And what did you do before? And why why did you start it? Um, in 2005, I started a physical school, mm. a physical democratic school, and ran it for three years. Uh, but due to many kind of challenges, uh, we decided to uh, end. And uh, then I had a kind of two years of um, break it between. I traveled mm. and did some substitute teacher yeah, jobs. Yeah, yeah. And what, what, and be- were, what were the challenges when you, when you faced with the democratic school? Uh, there were quite a few, like uh, the number of students was quite small, so we mm. didn't t- didn't get much income. Um, the the space that we were having, we were promised to have a space uh, for several hours a day, yeah. But then then they got it down, so we only had like uh, three or four hours per day, and that wasn't enough. And also, uh, for the fourth year, I kind of promised myself that I won't do it alone anymore. Because I was yeah. doing for three years, I was doing it alone. Really? Yeah. Uh, and uh, there was a person who was helping me, mm. uh, but she had to quit. So I kind of thought that this is a good moment to yeah. reconsider. And and you were like the official school? Uh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, <clears throat> so it was a school for homeschoolers. Yeah. So then you quit, and then then what else? <laughs> was... Yeah, basically, uh, um, because many during the school. When the physical school was running, many people kept asking if they could somehow join online. Mm. Uh, so it was a kind of natural, natural progression. Step. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. And do you know how many homeschoolers are are there in Finland? There are no official uh, numbers, but estimates are around uh, 500. 500. Yeah, yeah, so very, very few. Mm, I, I think it's a, I think it's very rapidly growing at the moment. Rapidly growing, yeah, it's like yeah. in Czech Republic. Yeah, we are on three three thousand five hundred, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but the, the beginnings were hard, or how was it? No, it is actually very well um, received. Um, yeah, it is. It's uh, we we are uh, planning to make a kind of comprehensive research or or questionnaire. Mm. For our students, uh, previous students, like what what were their experiences, and uh, um, yeah, get the feedback. But mm. we don't have that yet. We just have the kind of uh, experience that we've been told from the parents and 
students. Um, and, and the feedback has been almost totally positive, uh, even though only half of the students continue in our school. Mm. Uh, the rest of the half uh, either continues in a regular school or uses some other method of, method of homeschooling. Okay, okay. But but uh, it just kind of shows that the, one of the goals that I put for the school is uh, successful, uh, meaning the the key uh, or easy access to homeschooling. Mm. Because many times the parents are scared to take the responsibility. Yeah, but when, when they yeah yeah, yeah. Com comply with the national curriculum. Yeah, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when when they try our system and see that it's possible, then they pr come up with other ideas and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what would you say from the eight years of the experience? Uh, why why the why the parents and their children choose the homeschooling path? Like, what are the reasons yeah. for it? Yeah. Well, uh, the 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 mainly the biggest uh, or uh, clearly the biggest group is uh, students who have been bullied at school mm. so they don't want to go to school anymore yeah um, and many times they are heavily traumatized because the parents uh, wanted to try and try and try and something and of course the schools offer some small things and try to figure out but usually there's no real solution mm. yeah that's sad yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, our experience has been really positive in this uh, like many times the parents uh, tell me that uh, like uh, after one year the child is smiling again and, uh, <laughs> and so it's, yeah. it gives a lot of hope. Okay. And are the parents like, and these kids, are they uh, in also in offline? They meet, meet, meet each other or? Well, that was my original aim, and that's how I kind of built the system uh, that it has some components which uh, um, uh, support corporate co cooperative working. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it, it hasn't really happened, maybe due to the fact that many of the students have been bullied oh, okay. and that they don't really want to have connection with other students yeah. at the moment. And are, yeah. And are they in the same area or around the whole uh, Finland? Around the whole Finland. Yeah. Around the, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but uh, actually, I'm, I have quite detailed plans already for next uh, version of the system, which would encourage uh, more cooperation. And uh, do you know some parents who would like who like the idea of self-directed education, and they they choose the homeschooling path because of it? Some, very few, but some, yeah. Do you have some experiences in in the system, or you just went to just went to school? I th I think yeah. Yeah, I I, um, I went to regular school myself. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I discovered democratic education through Summerhill book for <laughs> in the beginning, yeah. uh, um, I started thinking like, how can I influence the system? And that and was my, when. And how, um, how old were you? Uh, I was about 21 or something, yeah. uh, so 25 years ago. And um, um, I, my first, or, or after thinking about it, I, I concluded that if, if I could change the teacher education, mm. like gradually the system could change. Okay. Uh, so I applied to become a, a classroom teacher, not because I wanted to be one, <laughs> because I wanted to change the teacher education. Okay. And um, we actually managed to start a completely new teacher education line in Helsinki University. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, based on self-directed self education. Oh, so and uh, how was it now, right? Is, yeah, is yeah, it it's still, been running, still there? Yeah, it's been running about for 15 years now. And uh, but they have a very small number of students, mm -hmm. like uh, ten to twenty. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, and they are running in parallel with the traditional one. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but still, it, uh, it it produces teachers, and uh, actually, the kind of funny thing is that many of the students who choose that uh, line, yeah, uh, they don't become teachers at all. <laughs> really, and what do they do? Uh, well, they employ employ themselves in other ways. <laughs> okay. Uh, because they kind of realize that uh, the education system is so far from what they from actually the, want. Yeah. Yeah. From the self-directed model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and right now we are following right like the 
what what is going on in the educational system i think yeah um and it also worth mentioning this is that uh, i've done like substitute teacher jobs mm. in maybe about in 20 different schools from kindergarten to adult education yeah so all, all levels so i have <laughs> some kind of experience of the and that we heard uh, from the documentaries and articles that like all schools in Finland are, are quite similar, but at the same time that the principals and teachers have a lot of freedom to do what they want to do. And so how similar are the schools really or not? Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I try to do uh, some kind of a small peek into the system hmm? La last year. Uh, I contacted several schools and asked if I can visit visit them. Yep. And and I ended up visiting five schools. I was planning to visit ten, but I kind of ran out of steam. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, th there are lots of similarities. Um, but I would say because it's still based on individual teachers, mm. uh, and the teachers have huge freedom in fin Finnish schools. So basically, it's totally up to the teacher how they run the, run the their classrooms and okay. there's huge difference between teachers really yeah so if someone says that the, all the schools are same well yeah but not all classrooms are the same it depends on uh, the teacher yeah yeah mm -hmm. and of and course on the, the on the principal or uh, well a little bit uh, of course the principal creates the kind of atmosphere for mm -hmm. the school and uh, <clears throat> like uh, also decides how much freedom is actually possible. Okay. Um, I, I, for example, I was doing one substitute work in one school, mm. and I decided that I, I want, I want to make the tests in a cooperative manner, uh, so that the students can cooperate while doing the tests. Uh, and uh, uh, the principal didn't agree. Mm. And he asked me to do redo the tests in a traditional manner, so I quit. So, oh. so uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's it's like these kind of things. Mm. That the principal can can influence the system. Yeah. So in these five schools you have visited, you you saw like differences between the teachers, how they manage the school, how the uh, the the classes, and yeah. how they how they teach. Yeah. And of course, there because uh, of the kind of uh, geopolitical uh, um, surroundings, yeah. uh, the schools are also quite different based on the uh, student material, like what kind of students they have. Um, in, in okay. for example, where I live, in our neighbor school, more than half of the students are immigrants. Immigrants. Okay. Yeah. So in the school, there's was it like 60 different languages were spoken or something. Whoa. So uh, it's it's uh, it creates a totally different uh, way of uh, running the school. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, <clears throat> then there's another uh, extreme, uh, the Finnish Swedish school, where all the students are uh, um, <clears throat> because in in Finland, Swedish is another official language. Yeah, and this is yeah. about seven percent of minority of Swedish speaking. Of Swedish, yeah. And uh, they have their own schools. And Swedish is uh, compulsory, uh, uh, like the second language. Yeah, it's also compulsory yeah. for mm. Finnish speaking uh, majority. Yeah. And uh, in those schools, um, it's it's of course the student uh, students are much more similar to each other, mm. and it's quite different atmosphere in that way. Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah. His cultural background is very similar also. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so the, so the teachers and um, they have to like follow the national curriculum, of course, right? Yeah, Because yeah. everything from the curriculum is compulsory. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so what were like the examples of the teachers, how, how they managed the, the classrooms? How, yeah. how, they, how did they teach? <clears throat> Um, well, there's a lot of just traditional teaching, uh, like in a normal classroom. Yeah, yeah. Children sitting, and in front of them there is a teacher. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me think. Like, uh, <clears throat> uh, I would say in general, maybe eighty percent of this of the classrooms that I visited were teacher-centered. 
<coughs> teacher centered. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and twenty percent were uh, student centered more. Or? Yeah, more like project based. Uh, the teacher would give instruction, and the students would work on different kinds of projects. And uh, yeah. And this and the, yeah, and these were like the traditional uh, traditional classrooms where there are uh, uh, children with the same age under uh, same age children. Uh, yeah, or so there is no age mixing like uh, in in very few places there are. Yeah, very few. Okay. For for example, I was I was uh, doing substitute work in one school where they were age mi mixing all all students from first to sixth grade. Mm. So in every every classroom there were students from seven years up to twelve or thirteen. And have you seen some differences in the curriculum because uh, this also districts and schools make like their own curriculum based on the national curriculum? Is it right? Yeah. Or not? Yeah, it's right. Uh, every, yeah. every every municipality has to do their own curriculum. Okay. And, and then also every school has to do their own. So there's like three levels of curriculums. Okay, so there are also different differences between these school curriculums. Yeah, yeah, because the new curriculum is from like 2016, I think, to 20, 2016. Yeah, it it yeah. it's uh, it was built on 20, uh, 2014, but it came into effect 2016. And what about the evaluation? How how does the schools evaluate the students if they whether they meet the curriculum? Yeah, uh, the law says that uh, the students uh, or the schools can decide to uh, not give any number evaluation until the eighth grade, about fourteen years of age. Yeah, but but usually they do. Uh, depending on the school and the municipality, they mm. uh, they start giving numbers usually at the fourth, fifth grade or so. Okay, okay. and before mm. that, before that, there is no evaluation or. Uh, the evaluation and uh, and many times it's very similar to number evaluation. <laughs> it's just with uh, words or <laughs> some other like symbols. Okay. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, th there are examples where the uh, where the teacher actually writes a kind of story mm. about the students. So it's it's nothing to do with the kind of numbers or. Um, and I, I think in 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 uh, Waldorf or Steiner schools, mm. that's kind of a common practice that they. They do this kind of uh, more, I would say, more humane <laughs> approach to evaluation. <laughs> that they uh, write stories and uh, maybe a poem about a student or something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so are there, are there any Waldorf or Montessori schools? Um, I think there are no Montessori schools at the moment, but there are Montessori classrooms inside uh, regular schools. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, and there are quite a few Waldorf or Steiner schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the students can't choose what to study because everything is all compulsory, right? Basically, yeah. Uh, it, it's funny because the new curriculum says that the students have to have a say in, in how they are educated and evaluated mm -hmm. based on their capability and age. Uh, but that almost never happens. So we are, we are actually preparing well, well, it, it happens in in small ways, like the, the student or the teachers can, uh, if they, they do project based working, for example, mm. and the students can have have an influence or say in what kind of project they want to do, uh, especially in arts and crafts or or music or uh, arts, so they they can uh, have more influence, I'd I'd say. Okay. But in in more uh, structured. Uh, um, Education, it's it's much more or less uh, regular, mm. <clears throat> especially in in this in in the middle school from seventh to ninth grade. Uh, it's it almost never happens that the students can have much say in their education. But th there's uh, one interesting thing, uh, which is uh, the kind of one week uh, period where no subjects. Uh, can be taught so in one one the, week a year or yeah 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 uh, it can be also divided into one days uh, <laughs> five five to, days oh, okay, okay. In, in a week in a year but uh, during those days uh, the school cannot 
deeds based on subjects. Mm. And uh, what do, what do you think about the new curriculum? Do you think it's a progress or from the previous one? Um, <laughs> it is that's an interesting question. I, I think there are many many things which are nice. Um, um, uh, but but it, it's uh, it doesn't really guide the teachers in how to change their education or how to change their paradigm mm. from the teacher centered into more student centered. Yep. Even though the spirit of the curriculum is is uh, very uh, student centered, um, because it still it still gives the content in based on subjects, uh, and um, um, and it doesn't really change the evaluation much. So e even though the spirit is very progressive. The practicalities the don't re reality. Change. Yeah, yeah, the reality yeah. reality don't match. And do you yeah. think that it will change in the future? Because right now the new teachers are like educated in this new curriculum, and they will maybe be more like student centered in their classrooms. Or well, not? that that's also a good question. Uh, I I know there are uh, a few progressive teacher education systems in Finland. Um, But I would say that the mainstream is still very. Uh, um, it, it, it's kind of. Uh, when I started my own own studies, mm. um, uh, after half a year of, of study of studies, it was very apparent that this wasn't really aiming to change anything. That uh, we were still taught in the old ways. We were tested mm. in the old ways. So the way the way the system the the, the uh, how it started this new new line of education was that I in one um, lecture I announced I went to the front of the lecture and said that after this uh, moment I won't participate in any testing anymore <laughs> because it just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> uh, so what, what did they say? <laughs> Well, basically, uh, some of the students agreed with me, and we kind of started a small group of uh, re rebellious uh, students. Rebels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, the teachers were kind of agreeing because they can't really disagree because uh, we are we are we have the points <laughs> <laughs> that they shouldn't be evaluating us in in old ways mm -hmm. if they want to teach us uh, new ways of evaluation. Yeah. Uh, so. <clears throat> So uh, we were given the option of uh, suggesting alternative ways of evaluation for each course. But then there happened to be one professor who also agreed with us in, in, in the way that uh, uh, we, we decided to start cooperating. And she happened to have the license to start a new teacher education. <laughs> so so it was a kind of a uh, sum of coincidences. <laughs> okay. So, like the spirit of the curriculum doesn't match the reality. Is that right? Yeah. Um, And do you think it's moving in the direction or not? Um, slowly, very okay. slowly. <clears throat> my my principal, my my sister is a principal of a of a regular school. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, primary school. And uh, she wanted to get rid of the number evaluation. Uh, but when she suggested this to the parents. The parents totally discreet. They didn't want it. No, yeah. no. That's the similar situation here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So even if the teachers would be well educated about the alternatives and mm. uh, want to change things, the parents are not. Oh, okay. So yeah, I get it. Mm. All right. But but yet there's this great disparity of uh, like uh, raising up children, like the the the, the way of raising. Children has totally changed mm. in 50 years, uh, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, mostly, uh, in some some ways, it's also gone uh, uh, way beyond. Uh, like uh, it's become uh, like a reckless, uh, and uh, I would say, um, how I would say, 
like when the parents don't have time or uh, a way to actually set limits or oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, support their children in that way. So, uh, so the practic practicalities in the school where, where there's uh, still the authority of teacher and uh, the kind of uh, democratic culture of the family, mm. they, they don't match anymore. Um, so, uh, but still the parents want to have the numbers and the old traditional education for their children because yeah. they don't know any any other way. Okay. And is, so. is there like the pressure pressure to have results from the teachers? Uh, not so much. Not, not so, so much. much. It, it's, it's much more important that uh, that the student is uh, um, feeling good, being uh, like having good self confidence, and um, like the mental health is more important than the numbers. Mm. Mm. Okay. Usually, of course, Usually. there are cases. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what about? Uh, I read that there are quite quite a few homeworks. Is it true? Yeah, still, it's kind of a uh, legendary misunderstanding that we don't have homework. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so there is homework. Yeah, usually. Yeah. But maybe I can give you an example of what is possible in Finnish education. Uh, like a good friend of mine uh, <clears throat> who used to be a teacher educator himself. Uh, started, started, he started his own company about educating in in a kind of game game oriented or playful ways mm -hmm. uh, but then he did a substitute teacher job last year and how did how, how he ran his classroom was that all through the year he had a, i think it was five fifth grade or uh, around that age mm. like 11 12 age and uh, they all through the year the only thing that they did basically was uh, build a city. Uh, so that was the all all year project. All year, and, yeah. Oh. Mm. And everything they were learning was based on this project. So they they were building uh, a kind of uh, democratic uh, um, governance for the city. They were mm. building the infra infrastructure, everything, um, and this was their school year. Oh, right. And how old was the students? How old were uh, uh, the students? Around 11, 12, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Awesome. So, so mm -hmm. the curriculum gives so much freedom for the teachers, but it's just up to the teachers if they can actually apply the freedom. Mm. And I also read that uh, like the timetable is quite... The, 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 children spend like less time in school than in other countries um probably a little bit less yeah uh we have uh, long breaks 15 minute breaks uh between our, minutes uh, yeah mm. uh, when i earlier when i said that uh, the division between traditional and uh, student-centered education was 80 20 i think i was a bit wrong i would say it's more like uh 60 40 actually 60 40 hmm? like 60 okay. 60 percent uh, teachers centered and uh, 40 percent uh, student centered but it's still far from self-directed education <laughs> yeah um even though it's like if the children have uh, opportunity to choose and do project based it's still not their own choice mm -hmm. kind of yeah the parents in finland are they like satisfied with the quality of the schools or or how, how would you say their opinions of the whole opinion of the whole Finland education system? How is it? Yeah, uh, I think yeah, most are uh, okay with it. Um, mm -hmm. I would say mostly because they don't know any different. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, they they are most teachers are very very good teachers. They care for their uh, students. Uh, they dedicate their life to the work. And um, yeah, mm. in in that way, it's a good education. It's good teaching. Good, <laughs> good te teaching. Yeah. 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 So they so most of the parents <laughs> send their children to the nearest school in yeah. their 
yeah, from their yeah. from their homes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the salaries of the teachers, I, I read that they're quite high. Uh, well, I think com like compar comparably globally, yeah. And yeah. It's, uh, quite and high. How how much like the average would you say? Um, um, uh, I might be wrong, but I, I'd say from uh, uh, two and a half thousand up to five thousand. Depending on, on on how many years you've been working oh, okay. and how many hours you have, but the average salary in Finland is about three thousand. So, it's it's, a, it, it's, it's low. It's it's lower than uh, other other professions with a similar education. So I heard that the private schools, the official private schools, cannot take uh, the tuition from the parents. Yeah, that's true. They have to be one hundred percent funded from the government. Uh, yeah, they they can take tuition, but it cannot be mandatory. So if it's voluntary, it's it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But they they get a lot of money from the government. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But for example, I, I think almost all all uh, Waldorf schools uh, they take small tuition, mm. like one hundred euros per month or something. Mm. Um, and, but it's it's yeah, they cannot uh, uh, make it mandatory. And there are quite quite a few in these private schools. I've heard like eighty, eighty of them, or some kind of the number. Maybe eighty could be quite close mm. to the truth. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like that. There are the biggest groups are uh, Waldorf schools and uh, language schools, mm. and uh -huh. inter inter international schools. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think the good things about Finnish education is that uh, the teachers have autonomy, mm. so it allows different kinds of things in the schools. Um, uh, the The curriculum is very open, very flexible. That's a good thing. Uh, it emphasizes uh, student uh, well-being, student participation, and so on. Mm. So there are many things which are good, but it's just uh, that uh, because the culture because of the culture of education the changes are very slow yeah and yeah. And, and the practice so, is mm. far from the ideal <laughs> so thank you thanks um, okay bye 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 <laughs> bye, -bye. <laughs>